My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the Giant Com Report wherever you get your podcast. If you're watching on YouTube later, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And don't forget, you can read my work on ESPN.com. For you Gold Club members, I'll be doing a private Zoom Thursday night, 7.30 Eastern Time. Look for the link. Join me there. Ask your questions. Bring your concerns. Whatever you want to do. As you can see, I'm joined by a special guest, Julian Javala. Sitting in for Julian tonight is her is his mom, Nikki Javala. So she will be the ones a- answering questions. And so, Julian, I appreciate you allowing your mom to stay up this late with you. So, Nikki, thanks for coming on. But he's so everybody much. get a good yeah get a good look at Julian. He's a cute kid. Um, so, and if you if you want to see one or a hundred pictures, you can follow Nikki on Instagram. So, at and you can I'm read Nikki's good. work on WashingtonPost.com. So yeah. there you go. So, Nikki, thanks for joining me. And I know you may have to skedaddle with him in a few minutes. Yeah. We don't know. So um, we'll just take whatever time you get. But let's start with this. So one in one, has anything to through two games surprised you at all? Um, yeah, I thought the defense would be better. Sorry to start it out with a negative there. No, but that's... um I, I thought they would be. You know, they don't have sort of the star power that um you know, even even you know the team last year had to start, um, especially up front. They still have John Allen and Deron Payne, which you know should be plenty up front. But you know they don't have the big names in the back. They have Bobby Wagner in year thirteen, right? Um, Frankie Louvu came in. Um, they have talent, but it's not showing up on Sundays. Um, the secondary is still getting torched on a number of plays. Um, you know, the, the front, they're getting pressure statistically, but it's not, they're not getting home. And it doesn't feel like the rush and the secondary, the coverage is is married at all. It, it just feels like guys are out of sync. Missed tackles, blown coverages, things that we've seen in years past. Um, so that would That's the biggest surprise for me. And let's stick with the defense because that is a concern because how much better can it get? And it has to get better. So when I, you know, watching the Giants the other day, they use a lot of max protections. They're double teaming the hell out of Allen and Payne. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure, like, because, you know, Nikki, sometimes after games, like the assumption is, oh, they're just getting double teamed all the place. And you watch the film, you say, oh, they're really not. Yeah, I think they are. Like, and I also think, so I wonder how much, you know, how are you, how do they change that? But also um, how much of that, you know, when you watch those guys second half, I almost wonder if they start to run out of gas a little bit and they need a guy like Johnny Newton and to kind of get back to get to a point where he can play more than 12 snaps. But what do you, what have you thought about that in particular and can that, you know, how can you improve that? Yeah, I think for one, you need, you need more help off the edge to kind of yeah. take the pressure off these guys, you know, to create some one-on-ones for these guys. Otherwise, you know, the offenses can devote, you know, two guys on them consistently because they don't have to worry about a threat from the edge. So they need, they need their edge guys to really step up. Um, I think probably blitzing more could help um, just throw in more looks, um, more threats from different places. And, right. you know, it's most simplest form should help. Um, but yeah, I, I was actually looking at this earlier today, your website, Espen, um, says that Jonathan Allen has been doubled 69% of the time uh, of his pass rushes, which is it's slightly higher than last year. I think they had him at 66 last year, but 69 is a pretty good clip. Um, you know, I, I that's tough. And Duran is he's right. not on the pass rush win rate rankings, um, 
but you can see off the film that he's getting doubled a fair amount. So right. help off the edge, help from the linebackers. I mean, they got to be able to get home. I, I agree. And I think, you know, it's funny, Nikki, because watching those double teams, especially even in the run game, and part of the thing I want to find out this week, are they asking the tackles to do some – to play a little bit differently than the past? Or in the past it was – you know, I know it was two gap, one gap, whatever, but it seemed like a little bit more square. Now, at times, Payne and Allen both sometimes, it seems like gaps are being created with guys with their goal to get up field. And so, right. and see, I think Julian agrees with that. But, totally. I, you know, I wonder – and then, like, you know, and there's sometimes the gap gets a little bit wider because they get a, somebody gets a little bit too far out. And, you know, I, I, I agree with Quinn that I think Luvu and Wagner were pretty active. Um, yeah. And there are sometimes like when they're attacking the line, it's they get the double teams off them. Right. right. Like you said, bring up, bring some pressures off there. But it is a, it's going to be a difficult way to live. The other thing, Nikki, that I wonder with some of the pressure, like, you know, they started slanting the D line in the second half a little bit more on some of the run plays. Right. right. I think that helped at times. Right. But with you know with the Quinn Witt pressures in Dallas, for example, I don't know that we've seen those yet because I wonder if they're a little bit concerned how they hold up on the outside. And if you're playing right. more zone right. than you want, can you run those games? So that's right. the hard part is to know, like, well, let me ask you this. Do you feel the front seven is more fixable than the back? Um. Yes, I do. I do. Because they do – they have veterans up front. They have – they have talent up front. Not to say they don't have talent on the back end, but we've seen these guys play at a high level before. D end was always going to be not necessarily a, a concern, a question mark, certainly, you know, after they traded away Montez and Chase Young. I mean, Montez is really the one for me. You know, when he yeah, played sure. his best, he was he's a heck of a player. And he's size-wise, athleticism, um, he's the biggest loss there. Um and, and finding key guys there that could play within the scheme, but also be a big enough threat to alleviate some of this pressure off their inside guys was huge. And I, you know, they, they gave Doran Armstrong a pretty sizable contract. That's one of their larger ones um, along with Luvu and Cleveland Farrell. I mean, it's probably overdrafted where he was, um, but he's still a good player. He's just, you know, age is probably catching up with him a bit. Um, but they need they need help on the edge, and I think that was probably a, a big reason for trying to get, get Jamin to really get up to speed on right. the edge. I mean, he's another athletic freak. Wasn't really making it inside at linebacker, but you know, get him off the edge, he could do some damage. But going back to what you said about Johnny Newton having him on a pitch count right now, as Dan Quinn said, kind of forced him to to have five DTs active, so they had to make Jamin a healthy scratch. But yeah, they, they just they need help on the edge, and I, I think the things that are clearly fixable to me are technique issues. I mean, even Bobby Wagner is missing tackles, which just seems odd. Um, so if they can clean those up, if they can get on the same page, they should be a lot better up front. The secondary could be a tougher fix. I mean, even their their reserves. I mean, Michael Davis started for Emmanuel Forbes, then got benched for right. for Noah I. I'm calling him Noah I. I can pronounce it. <laughs> No, it doesn't work like that for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they don't, they don't have the starting talent. They don't have the depth there. Um, Mikey Sainer still, I think he can be a good player. He's still young and we're seeing sort of the rookie mistakes that you would see in a corner and playing that, especially for a rookie playing in space in the slot is difficult. Yeah. I, I think they need more talent on the back end and to improve technique issues and communication yeah. on the front. Yeah, and I think I, I'm more optimistic. And the, the one guy I want to see more of, I'm curious to see how he develops, is Johnny Newton. And yeah. because, you know, watching the other day, he was he showed some energy off the ball. Mm -hmm. Now, I think some of that, too, is you've got to get used to, I mean, this is the first time he's played an NFL game. Yeah. Like, he hadn't yeah. even played in the preseason, no joint practices. That's so he true. looked like a guy who was just kind of out there to provide energy in those 12 plays. And there were a couple of times he, I thought there were some things I'm like, I really like this. Like he could be a problem if he starts to get this down. Right. right. But how long is that going to take? And somebody did ask me like, how could these guys be tired? They only played 22 minutes because they're getting double teamed every freaking play. Like right. that's not easy. You're having right. 600 pounds or more on you every play when they're in there and so yeah. like that wears you out and yes I think ordinarily 
if you have the good rotation and all that, you stay fresh. But I think that is partly why, yeah. you know, it was. And so, you know, I do feel more optimistic that you can get that fixed because I think some of that is time together. The corner stuff is going to be a struggle because I just don't know. Now, I think St. Juiced, you know, I think he did a nice job, but the problem is, yeah. And so like, you know, I think he plays more fundamentally sound, right? And right. and when he gets beat, it's it's going to be because this is, he's not a number one corner, you know, and he's going to be asked to play Jamar Chase and and Marvin Harrison Jr. and CeeDee mm-hmm. Lamb. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's playing guys above um, yeah. the level. So I have more concerns there um, than anything else. And, you know, um, you know, and Jeremy Chin too, like you talk about missed tackles. He had Juan on exactly. Jones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there was one, it's like, there's sometimes you try to say, well, what, who's the responsibility here? You're in the gap. Is mm-hmm. yeah, You know? And so, um, I don't know, Nikki. I, I think I'm a little, you know, I'm more optimistic about the front because I think there's more to to come together with than I am with the with the with the back and with the corner play. So, right. you know, that's kind of where I'm at. Other realtors have vacant homes. At Pest Properties, ours come occupied and ready to invest. Looking to relocate your larvae? Try the Petri Residence. This rustic home features thousands of crevices to squirm in through, vaulted ceilings for our wall crawlers, and an outdoor bird bath teeming with mosquito eggs. So kick up your six hairy legs and sign today. Before pests move in, Terminix it. With over 95 years of experience, we'll help keep your home off the pest market. Visit Terminix.com today. When migraine strikes, you're faced with a choice. Ride it out with the trade-offs of treating or push through the pain and symptoms. With Ubrelvi or Ubrojapant, there's another option. Ubrelvi is a prescription medicine used to treat migraine attacks in adults and is not for prevention. One dose works fast to eliminate migraine pain. Most people had pain relief and some even had pain freedom within two hours. Treat it anytime, anywhere, without worrying where you are or if it's too late. People took Ubrelvi within four hours of a migraine attack. Do not take with strong CYP3A4 inhibitors or if allergic to Ubrelvi. Allergic reactions can happen and may occur hours to days after use. Get medical help right away if you have swelling of the face, mouth, tongue, or throat, or trouble breathing. The most common side effects were nausea and sleepiness. Ask your doctor about Ubrelvi, the anytime, anywhere migraine medicine. Find more product information at ubrelvy.com or call 844-4-U-B-R-E-L-V-Y. Sponsored by AbV. TD. Tutty, taking it to the house. Whatever you call a touchdown, they matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Ready to place your first NFL bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Ready to do a touchdown dance of your own? Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code KIME, that's code KIME, K-E-I-M, for new customers to get $250 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks and get one month of NFL Plus Premium. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, 21 plus age eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance for additional terms and responsible gaming resources see dkng.co slash ft ball nfl plus premium offer available only to new and former nfl plus subscribers additional nfl plus premium terms at nfl.com slash terms what level if you say okay the ceiling for this that group could be what in your eyes certainly better than what it is now i don't know that's a that's a hard one because we've never seen this group to play together really so you know, our first, the first two games are not what you wanted, not what you expected, but what the, the ceiling is, I don't know, because I don't, we've never seen them right. at their best once. I mean, I think Cleveland Farrell was hurt from, I, he was hurt for at least one preseason game, I think, right? right you know, so right. the Jets game. So we, I don't, did we even see the full front at all in preseason? I, I no. kind of think we didn't, so. No. Yeah, I did. So, Wagner play still. So. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I I think 
you take some solace in in looking at what Joe Witt and Dan Quinn did in Dallas and and getting some guys that were maybe considered reserve level to play really, really well. Um, But it's hard to really make any sort of comparisons because of Micah Parsons. (laughs) They don't have a Micah Parsons. Like that guy can do so much. You can't really compare defenses. um, But for as much as they've preached development and attacking style and tackling, um, you got to think, you got to hope that, they can get some of these issues resolved and that'll kind of clear up, at least as you said, some of the things in the front seven. Right. And I think that's a good point too, because there were a handful of plays the other day. Now it's the giants, but it's also Malik neighbors. Mm -hmm. You're in position to stop neighbors twice for short games. Mm -hmm. You miss, you take a bad angle, you miss the tackle. Right. So there, and then you're on the crosser, the first crosser he has um, Davis bump Wagner bumps into Davis. The mm-hmm. second one is just speed, and he beats St. Jude's across the middle. So that, that that's going to he's a he's a really good receiver, you know. But there are some things where it's like, okay, then I'm one of the touchdowns. Um, the first one where they had the bunch formation, like I don't know, I still don't know. I watched it a number of times. I sent it to people who are you know involved in football. I'm like, I'm not sure quite what they're doing. I think they just got fooled by what the Giants ran. I think the concept was really good yeah. more than it you know as much as anything. Um, but you know, I think there's, there, so there are things you can improve on. I mean, yeah. we're, we're not looking at a top half defense, I don't think, but you need to play a lot better, especially yeah. on third down. So let, let's, let's flip it over to, to the other side of the ball. What has anything surprised you on that side? Um, it's still too early. So I don't want to get ahead of myself on this one, but I think, you know, a couple of their veterans that they signed in the off season who had been dealing with injury issues in the recent past. Austin Eckler, Zach Ertz have looked really good in the first couple of games. I really like their running back tandem. I mean, to have Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler, two very different guys on paper and in life in general. Um, they just, they complement each other well. They And I think Brian Robinson has always sort of been underrated for his pass catching ability. Um, so seeing him get involved in that more, Having Austin Eckler, who's more shifty, Brian Robinson with his power, I think is a really nice duo. And and it helps Jaden Daniels, helps any quarterback, but especially a young quarterback. Um, So that's that's been a pleasant surprise, seeing these veterans, seeing that running back tandem. Um, Not a surprise at all, but still disappointing is the offensive line. Yeah, and I think let's stick with like, because Eckler and Ertz were big additions. And just watching... Eckler run the other day and just kind of swerving in and out. It's kind of like, I feel yeah, like, he's like you know, a skier out there the way yeah. he does. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, cause you, you wondered about um, just what you always wonder what those guys have left. I don't, yeah. I think what they're doing, I, you always have to throw, if they stay healthy, attach them, but I think it's for any player, but yeah. there's no reason to think that this won't continue with them. If you'd like to think so, Ertz, I'm less sure of. I'm not sure of either of them. I shouldn't say that. I'm not sure of either of them. But I like how they're using Eckler alongside Brian Robinson. You know, they're sort of 1A, 1B, but Eckler's not taking the the bigger load here. Right, and he right. knows he he's not in position to do that. He's 29. He's been in the league for a while. Um, if they did that to him and made him the true, quote, unquote, starter, which I hate that, that label even for running backs anymore. I just, it's stupid. Um, But his body wouldn't be able to handle it and he knows it. Now they're maximizing what he can do. And it works so well with Brian Robinson um, and helps the O-line. Of course, it's weird seeing this team have a run game again. Right. And I I like the concepts and and I think they also have like, I think Ertz did a nice job blocking um, in the game. I think base does a good job. I got to be honest. I think you got to get you know some more consistent blocking out of the receivers, and I think number seventeen's got to be more consistent with that. Um, you know, just because I think there that's how you get your big runs, and there are a couple of runs that were didn't work or plays that didn't work. You know, you've got to get the consistent blocking outside. That's what some really top teams get. But but I agree. Like I like Robinson ran really angry, but I also like Nikki some of the some of the concepts they use and what they're doing with that and the line's going to get heat for the, some protection and all that. Um, but here's the other thing. If I'm another defense, like I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep sending guys at them. 
And just yeah. because I don't, you know, can they handle that? Um, and Wiley just Wiley, I thought I thought did a nice job in the run game, but gets beat inside on the in the past a lot, right? So right. you know, um, that's going to be a concern for me. But um, with 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 Ertz, like you know, do, is that you view that as sustainable for him? I, I want to think so. Um, you know, he is getting older. He has had his injuries in the past. He <clears throat> looks healthy now. Is playing well now. So I, you'd like to think so. Um, you know, and, and he's showing what makes him so valuable, especially in this offense with this group where they don't really have a bigger receiver. They don't really have a true threat outside of Terry. Um, so he's he's not just a luxury, Zach Ertz. He's a necessity um, because he's the only other pass catcher that can take some heat off Terry. My fears for that reason, I, you hope they don't overuse him, but it, it seems like they have a sound plan in place. What do you think? What do you expect from Noah Brown going forward? I expect more of what he did in this game. I thought he looked good. You know, yeah. he had that one deep catch that, you know, that's why they brought him in here. I don't, he's not the type of player from what I've seen. Um, he's not going to light up the stat sheet, but to get those, those big chunk plays. Yeah. That's what you need him for. Um, just to have that threat. And he was, uh, that was like, that was a big deal to, I think a nice pickup. Cause I think he can help right. you in multiple ways. Um, but if he's getting open there and like, and he already, they already trust him to do that. I think he can be a help for them. So, which yeah. is, which is obviously, which is obviously a good thing. By, by the way, one thing on the defense, cause someone keeps pointing out here, like I'm not making it like the defensive tackles have to be better. That's yeah. true. They're also yeah. getting double teamed very often. That's also very yeah. true. So yeah. yes, like you still need to make plays in the pass game when you get singled up and when you, you have to apply pressure. That's also part of that's going to go back to, can you cover long enough to help those guys get there? So that's where it's hand in hand. But I would agree, like they're not playing at an all pro level. Like those right. all pros beat those, um, right. but, but they are getting double teamed a lot. So like, just to be clear right. on that um, anyways, um, with Terry, what, you know, do you, this is just this another slow start, you know, you, cause like, yeah. what did you see? Do you agree? Like I thought he and Jaden had some pretty good chemistry this summer developing. Definitely. Definitely. And I, I think it will continue to grow. I think everything's different once you get in the regular season, you know, things are faster. You're playing against, you know, the starting def defense, you know, they weren't playing against the full starting crew in, in preseason. Um, so you, I, I think it'll continue to develop. I, I think Terry had at least, what I would consider, I, I was looking across other websites to see if they actually accounted for a drop. It didn't look like Pro Football Focus did, um, but I don't agree with a lot of what they do. Um, <laughs> it didn't give him, it looked like one, at least one, maybe two passes were dropped that were catchable. Um, but again, similar to the the tackles, like he, outside of Ertz, who isn't playing nearly the snaps that Terry is, are, He's really their only threat in the pass game. That's right. why I, I think it's paramount to get Brian Robinson and Eckler even more involved in the pass game because, I mean, Robinson broke off a couple big catch and runs there. Right. Um, so, yeah, he's – he's defenses bracket him. They can double – it's, you know, it, it makes it so much more difficult on him. Um, but – like the tackles, you still got to find a way to get open. And I felt like there, there were so many instances with the receivers as a whole where Jaden's just, you know, scrambling, trying to find anybody. Um, and it just wasn't there. So, yeah, I mean, it's this is the lowest first two weeks Terry has had numbers wise in his career. Um, but the circumstances are are different each year. Um, I, Sure, he's facing more bracketed coverage. So similar to the DTs is how I would say it. Yeah, and and I think I think eventually he'll get his because I do think I mean, shoot, in week one, he's open for the 70 yarder, right? And then there yeah. was another play where he's where where I think as Jaden Daniels grows, that Daniels would have worked to him on the particular play, which may have been another 30 or 40 yards. You know what I mean? So I think like there there were chance there were opportunities that game for hit for them to connect more. 
that in this game, you know, I the I kind of think they took him out of it, and with the coverage, like just a lot of zone, and you know, you, you forced kind of underneath quick throws, whatever. So I'm not worried about that just yet. Looking to invest? Start your journey by exploring exchange traded funds with Global X ETFs. Exchange traded funds, or ETFs for short, create baskets of stocks, bonds, and other assets that you can buy in a single trade. Global X specializes in ETFs that track emerging trends, like the rise of artificial intelligence, as well as strategies aimed to generate income potential. Visit GlobalXETFs.com to discover how you can get started. This episode is brought to you by Batiste Dry Shampoo. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or getting ready for a night out, Batiste has a dry shampoo for you. Refresh with over 10 signature fragrances. Or try Batiste Hint of Color, a tinted dry shampoo that seamlessly blends with your hair. Need an extra boost? Try Batiste Dry Shampoo with ad benefits, like volumizing, texturizing, and more. Buy Batiste now, in-store, or online at your nearest retailer. Hey, it's Bram Weinstein here, voice of the commanders, and of course, frequent guest of this podcast, The John Kime Report. I wanted to let you all know that my show, which airs at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on ESPN 630, is now exclusively produced by Empire Media, my company, and it's going to be distributed through our network. So I'm asking you, please, if you subscribe to this show and love this show, give mine a try as well. Subscribe to The Bram Weinstein Show wherever you get your podcasts. And many of the shows and many of the elements that are in the show will be available on the Empire Media YouTube channel. We're going to talk a ton of commanders and other DC sports. Check it out. With great... What have been your early impressions so far? I thought he's looked good. You know, I know much has been made about the number of times he's run the ball, and I get it, but I think in context, it's kind of been necessary. There, are, there have been a few where you're like, okay, he could have maybe gotten this guy. I don't think there have been any blatant, blatant missed opportunities where a guy is standing wide open. I think it's more of, yeah, he probably could have given that guy a shot. Um, but I, I like his decision making overall. Um, the only thing you worry about is how many hits can he withstand a, right. a, a game? And you know he's not a bigger quarterback. Um, he's quite lanky, uh, and, and I think seeing that one hit that he took to the ribs where it knocked the wind out of him, I, I think that was sort of not a wake up call because we all knew that this was a possibility, but another reminder that you know you can't you know, hang him out there too long. Um, but I, I thought he looks, he looks good. He looks poised. He doesn't ever seem rattled. Um, he never star- stops. I mean, he he's always playing till the very end. Oh, there's always that urgency. Um, they talk about finishing nonstop. You always see that with Jaden. Um, I just wish they, he had a little bit more help around him, both with the line and, you know, skill players. Um, but you know, again, it's year one for this for this group for this regime. So, did you did you come away after? Because there was a kind of a weird game. Red zone, we know what happened. Bad, yeah. right? Four hundred twenty-five yeah. yards, pretty good, right? Yeah. Thirty-seven minutes control. So, how do you like? Is your what's your bigger takeaway from that? Like, hey, they can get this going, or like, you know, what 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 was your takeaway from that? With the red zone and not yeah, no, with just the offense, the offense in general, because they were they yeah. moved the hell out of the ball. I mean, they didn't punt. Yeah. I don't know when the last time, you know, Tress Way stood on the sidelines like that the whole game. I do. I looked it up. It was only I one did. I had oh, you and Blade. Well, the well some of us have people who bug the hell out of them next to them oh. in the game. So, oh. well, I think that's you who has oh. that. Not me. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot what that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I I, I think you. <laughs> When was the last time you didn't punt? I think it was 20. I looked this up. I think it was 2020. It was only one other time. All right. Well, you were looking up and now you can't tell me the answer. Well, I don't remember what I did yesterday, let alone what Tressway did six years ago or whatever, (laughs) but take a look at my tweets. There was was only one time. It was only one other time. Okay. So there you go. So what should then take away up with the offense? I mean, like you said, they moved the ball well, but I, I think part of it too is something that, 
I I wasn't thrilled with the, the play calls in the red zone. To me, I thought they could have done more um, to help Jaden. But yeah, they got to figure that. I feel like that's been an issue with three different coordinators here for the last four years is, is finishing drives. And I don't know why exactly. I don't know like what, you know, I, everything gets tighter in the red zone, obviously, but it's just not working. Um, I think that again is where you need everybody on their details. Like you need guys to get open and to create, and then you need them to be on the same page um, with Jane. And that sounds obvious and simplistic, I realize it's much harder to do when you're in that situation, but um, I think they ran the ball most of the time in the red zone, right? Yes. And so that's, you know, that was their thing. Like, first of all, if you knew what the answer was, you wouldn't yeah. be sitting here talking to me. Exactly. So that, that would be, that's one thing. Yeah. So the other, I mean, obviously you can't keep committing penalties in there because they kept putting themselves. Yeah, well, like I mean, God, that's been an issue since the start of training camp. Right. They're still doing it. Right. Just, that's what I, that's what I don't get because in, in a lot of times there was, you know, hard counts, hard counts are like, Oh, who, Oh, was that offsides? Nope. Another false start. So that has been an issue. I don't know why, but it has. And um, you know, that's one thing that should be easy to correct and give yourself a better chance. I also think, you know, with, cause he's got, he's obviously got the legs. They all know he's going to run at some point or, or that I'm sure it's like, they all know he can do that. So I think they're going to be very aware yeah. and they're probably play a lot of zone down there, which should regulate things. But um, you know, it, it's not like there've been a lot of times where you just missed a guy or something like that. Right. And um, I think that's going to be a hard one to fix, but I do think the run game becomes more important down there and, and to balance yeah. it out a little bit. Um, and the more better you run down there, the better offense you're going to have in the red zone. So that's all there right. is to it. So, you right. know, um, but um, we'll see. I think because if they, if they can get that, that's the next step. And I think that's what I'm curious to see. Do they build on that? How do they yeah. build on that game? Because that's the step. And um, Julian's yeah. calling to go to bed now. So um, yes. if you got to, if you got to run Nikki, go ahead and I'll close it up shop oh, sure. here. Unless but, everybody wants to hear him scream at the top of his lungs, which I'm assuming. No, listeners don't. no so. we, we, we hear his mom scream at the top of her lungs. We don't need to hear that. Ah. Her son, uh, Anyways, how do you I, put up with that? I don't know. Anyway, Nikki, <laughs> I'm going to stay on here for a couple more minutes. Nikki, I appreciate you joining me and let people know where you can find, where they can find you before you go. Um, you can find me on Twitter at N-I-C-K-I-J-H-A-B-V-A-L-A or at the Washington Post, washingtonpost.com slash sports. Cool. All right, Nikki, thanks a lot. I'm going to stick on here for five more minutes, answer a couple cool. questions, but I appreciate you taking the time. And thanks a lot, Joan, for giving us thanks. your mom for a few minutes. Yep. See ya. <laughs> Bye, guys. So, see ya. Anyway, folks, so... For me, the, the red zone comes down to a lot about um, just the, you know, quit the penalties. And then I think for Jaden, the more experience he gets, first of all, I think you hit more big plays and you give yourself more chances um, inside there, maybe some longer touchdowns, but also just knowing I, one thing I really appreciate about him is he takes care of the ball very well. He makes with when he's throwing it or when he's not, he makes good decisions. The only time where I questioned the decision was, when he ran one time, and he tried to scramble on second and eight, and he lost five yards. Now you're putting yourself in a really bad spot. So I think that, but I think that's for him. It's an experiencing. I think the one thing I really like about Daniels is I think he's going to learn. And it's funny because I spent a lot of time, obviously, talking to people about his college days and watching his college film and how he progressed and how he progressed from year one to year two at LSU. And at year one at LSU, it was get your first and second read, and then you're going to run. And then he, the, the, all the work he did turned him into a much better passer and much more um, going, getting through his progressions at the VR stuff, the film work. That's all the stuff he does. So it's going to get better for him in all those areas and keeping his eyes downfield. So I think you're going to get, you know, but, but they have to me running the ball well down there is a key, but you know, I, I say that. And then they had a nice run by Eckler and then it gets botched because of a false start. So that's where, you know, let's see them quit the penalties first and then see what they can do because you can, and the, you know, uh, no sacks down there on second down and, and et cetera. So don't hurt yourself and then give yourself a chance. Cause I do think I'm curious to see too, how Noah Brown helps down there. Cause he is a, he's not a huge target, but he's a bigger target than what they also have. And, you know, I'll, I'll I talked about this on my um, tape, the game review podcast as well. Like, they had some 
couple opportunities. One, if you remember the bobble snap that he had, where Zacchaeus is going to run a jet action off that, it was wide open on the round the end. I mean, it was wide open. There's a, a chance that he scores. He'd have to make a guy miss, but he's certainly going to get a first down in that play, and you keep the drive going and with another chance for a touchdown instead of kicking a long field goal. But he, um, it was a chance there, right? And there was a run by Robinson I felt would have had a better chance, just a little bit more better blocking by Bates and, and McLaurin, and then you've got a shot. Now, I don't think he scores unless he breaks a tackle from a linebacker, but you're probably picking up – you may pick up a first down. So, you know, little things like that can make a difference. But this, to me, it was a the, – the red zone was bad, but I like what I've seen – I like what I saw from them just with the run game and then the Ertz and Eckler contributions showing that, yes, they can still play. And I think that's a good sign for them. Um, they just need to have, I think if, if Brown can provide a little bit more and get Terry going early, then I think you now have a chance to be a consistent offense and how, you know, and I think we know with that defense, you're going to have to, you know, control the clock a little bit. But the only way you're going to win by doing that is by converting into touchdowns. And can they do that? So that to me is going to be the big thing going forward and starting Monday night in, in Cincinnati. That's, you know, where I have more of a preview of them. I'm going to have Ben baby who covers the Bengals for us for ESPN. I'm going to have him on later this week. I'm going to have Bram Weinstein. He and I are going to talk about all, a lot of stuff for Thursday's podcast. They'll do my five things, I think on Sunday. So there's a lot more going on and in, in just kind of practice reports, et cetera to keep, get you ready for that one because, listen, it's the first time, primetime game for Jaden Daniels in a Washington uniform. You know, I hope, uh, you know, I there's only been two games, but what I've seen, it's not just what I've seen from him in these two games. It's what I've seen from him since he's gotten, since he arrived in Washington in all facets, the way he conducts himself in the locker room, the way he is with him, with others, others in the building, um, the way he is, there's, you know, there's confidence, as Dan Quinn would say, there's confidence and there's humility with him. I think all those are really good signs, the way he works, um, et cetera. So I think all those things are really good. And then what he's showing so far, when I've watched some of the other rookie quarterbacks, and I haven't been able to watch a lot, so it's hard for me to say, but watching him, he doesn't come across as a rookie. There are rookie mis- or young guy mistakes, but he doesn't come across as a rookie in terms of not, you know, he is he can, he can um, stand up to the moment. And I think that's what I'm curious to see on Monday is how he handles that atmosphere. Um, and it's going to be a tough one because <laughs> that's a desperate team they're going to be facing, a team that thought it could compete for a division title in, in, that, in, in the AFC North. So going to be a tough one. But again, guys like that tend to do big things in, in those kind of games. So we'll see. Anyways, folks, appreciate you joining me tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, Nikki always provides really good insights. So give her a read, give her a follow. Um, Always love having her on. I think she's super smart and and very sharp reporter. So, um, and I appreciate everybody joining me and I'll be back on Thursday morning with Bram Weinstein, the voice of commanders. So, and don't forget you gold members, 7.30 Eastern time, Zoom on, on Thursday night. Join me there, bring your questions, comments, whatever you want to do. We'll have some fun. Talk to you next time.